Hi everyone. We're trying this to see if I can go live and answer some questions. So bear with me. Okay, there was a couple of this morning that were having issues uh, that said they were having some problems with application. So I'm going to give it a few minutes. Hi everyone. Um, and let everybody join on that is available. I see Jenny's and Kelly. Hi there, Linda. There is a little delay from my video and what I'm saying. So um, this is the first time I've ever done this. Every so bear with me. Okay. Hi, Peggy. Okay. So um, I've got a sheet here, and while everybody's joining, I want to go over a couple of things. So, when you are asking questions on our class, which you're on now, um, I've got a paper laying here, and I'd like for your help on this. It helps me try to um, diagnose and solve the problem that you might be having. So, first of all, is what you're using? How many layers did you use? Stacking order. So, uh, see if Tell me if you've got like white on the bottom, clear on the top. Is it two millimeter, three millimeter? Give me some clues so that I know how to help you better. Um, did you paint on the top or the bottom? So these are just some basic things that if you'll answer these questions when you post a question or an issue, that would help me help di excuse me diagnose it. <coughs> excuse me. Um, did you cap it? You do not cap it. All of our colors are glossy when they fire. Cap it, you can. The only ones um, that you would have to cap would be the GTs. G stands for glass, T stands for toxic. So there's only three of those colors yellow, red, and orange. And you have to fire those and then come back and cap or use reverse painting uh, because they do have lead in them. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. The other thing is, um, tell me exactly what products you used. Was it the G-Series, the GS, the BAs? So try to refer to and even list the colors for me so that helps, uh, you know, help you solve your issues, okay? Um, and then are you brushing or are you putting the colors? So another thing. So just as much information as you can. That way I can help you better, okay? And, of course, put a picture in there. And even if you take a picture before firing, after firing, that will help also, okay? So questions that I will come back and ask you. All right? Um, we do have our quick reference guides on the website. Most of the orders that go out, we're not going to put it in every order if you order often, but we do have um, a sheet that shows you all of our enamels, and it has basic information front and back, okay? So you can see all that. And then we have individual pages. So a lot of times if you will order, um, say you order glitz, we are 99% of the time we're going to include this paper with that order, okay? Unless you just ordered. I try to keep track of that myself. Don't forget to turn them over because on the back is another reference guide. So you've got the sparkles here. You've got the We've got the layering mix, excuse me, the paste on this one, and then the back of that one just shows different kits that are available. We talk about the color concentrates and how you can use those also on a sheet. There is also on the color concentrate or the enhancer tab on the website, there is quick reference and schedules and uh, links to all the PDFs that you can print out as far as going uh, to use the color concentrates on there. Uh, the layering mix information is on the back of that one. And then you have your basic G series, um, the GTs, the GOs, meaning the outlines. And then we've got on the back of that one, bubble art. Okay, so enough of that. So uh, we had a couple of people, and I believe they're from overseas, that had an issue with uh, fuzziness on the edge of their painting okay. and I apologize if the camera left my side view over here if it's a little fuzzy uh, the internet is not the best today so 
good idea to do this today, but I am. Okay, so let's go over basic mixing. So in this container, I have a color. So all of your enamels, the standard size, that also is, okay? So I have some powder in here, and you, I think you can see that. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so we've got the glass medium. If you mix with the glass medium, you're going to retain the color. If you mix with water, you're going to delete the color. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got one ounce, or excuse me, half ounce jars that in the glitz. So I've got it about half full. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to almost cover that. I'm going to use the tool. Now this is one of our tools. I've um, got some polymer clay on it to make it easier on my hand. Um, put a little bit of start mixing, okay? Add a couple of drops at a time until you get familiar with how much product and how much medium you need. And you can see that's still very dry and pasty. So I'm going to add about five drops mixing. Get all the when you uh, cook and you've got flour at the bottom of your bowl and you're mixing up a cake mix or something. You got to make sure all of that is mixed in there. Okay, so right now we've got like toothpaste. So we'll need more medium. And until you know you're only add a couple of drops at a time. And I have uh, Kyle helping me and if there's any questions he will read them on you think uh, you want to ask here today, feel free. Otherwise, I'm going to answer them after I uh, off of here, okay? All right, so I think I've got mixed up good. So just clean your tool off, and I'm just going to take it over and put it on a paper towel. Now, because my jar is short and shallow as far as mixed up, I'm going to tilt my jar slightly. And I'm going to dip into it and then pull it out and count how many times it drips. So I'm going to dip, pull it one, two, three. It's already dripping, so I know that I'm good. So let's go over that again. So I've cleaned my tool, dip in one, two, three, four. So it dripped by two and a half, so I should be good with this one, okay? Always clean off your tool before you go. Okay, so I wanted to just show you the scene of that. Um, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, Carby, I believe it was this morning, had an issue and she said she was having fuzziness uh, around the edges. After looking at her photograph in detail, I really think that um, it's how hot it was fired, how long of a hold, and her kiln may be firing a little hot, but how much it rounded. And when your glass rounds, okay, so you need to kind of think about that um, a little bit. So I've already mixed up. She was using vermilion white. Uh, she may have been using uh, the white outline, but I mixed up. Vermilion. And even after you mix, you still need to go back right before you start painting and double check your drips. So it may be hard to see this. If I get my finger, maybe you can. One, two, three. Okay ready and clean. All right, most of you have, and what I did was I drew up just a little flower that uh, she had on her, okay? And then I've got our zero uh, 455 that I'm using, okay? So you flood the color in. So I'm going to grab, I'll try to keep it out of this, and flood the color on. Clean your glass, of course. We're too clean with um, white distilled vinegar and a preferably a lint-free cloth okay so just flood that color on so she, it looked like she had white and um, the vermilion and when I'm changing colors a lot of times I'll just really clean the brush contaminate and get out of there okay then I applied that. Let me see if I can go a little bit closer. Whoops, wrong way. Okay. And then I'll wipe my brush free. And then I will tend to just shimmy that back and forth. 
some color. Kyle, do we have any questions? No. Okay. All right. So I try not to do petals next to each other to eliminate them running into each other. Okay. Just like petal on the brush. If you think you've got too much, just kind of blot it there. I'm going to go over just the mix and basic applications. And I have a video, but I thought it would be beneficial to you guys if I went live. And those of you that know me, I'm a person. I'd rather you just see my hands. Ha ha. So um, I am. <laughs> so you can see. All right. So then come in with the and zip it back and forth. You can also come back with the red. And it really depends on how heavy you put the color, how thick or thin, okay, will make a difference, okay? And it really depends on what you like. Okay, so I'm gonna have to leave that one and set it aside. So what I would, thought I would do, Claire, and I believe Man, Mary was the other, Mary Leitner was another one that asked um, about, I'm gonna, remove this one really quick and I'm just going to set I'm going to do a test on and she was I had a little white and clear so that's what I'm using uh, normally I use 96 I'm going to do I did a one inch piece I'm going to do a one and a half and I'm going to do a two inch piece and what I'm going to do is fire them all in the same kiln and that will tell us how the it stretches or it doesn't stretch and I think that'll be a good lesson uh, for all of us okay so again so I'm not pushing down on the glass so if I were pushing down it would look like that and it would be that is what you do not want because you're gonna have very thin application if you do that okay so pedal on wipe off the excess on your and then come back in with your second color and shimmy back and forth and I just keep playing with it. This is very small, usually a lot larger, okay? So I'd like to show you um, a piece up close. This is a piece that recently, okay? I don't see, this is three layers, and I'll move it around so you can see, and I'm trying to look up at the camera because my feed is delayed. So there is no even in the three layers. Um, so I really think it has to do, I do have some pieces that were like your, uh, but I still don't see fuzziness to it. So I really think it's probably how much that little, I think you said it was a one inch piece, how much it actually stretched was firing. Okay. So that gives you some idea. Here is another piece that I did, um, at retreat, um, and you don't see fuzziness around the edge. Now, and I did not clean up any edges the one time uh, application. You can take a toothpick and you can take a Q-tip and you can even take a uh, brush and do it. Here is, you know, another piece. It's on top of a glass and you, there's a little bit of fuzziness and it's probably because I was just a little thinner out there on the edge. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. I'm off camera. Um, see out here on this edge, Claire, there is a little bit of fuzziness. No problem with that. Um, and it can be how many times something is fired also. That may make a difference too. Because the more you fire, the hotter you fire, it's going to round and stretch over. Okay. So let's, um, let me back off real quick. So once again, I was using uh, just our standard class brush. Okay. Um, you could for that versus a sable. A sable would be like the rounds. Okay, so this is a sable hair. This is a tacklon hair. And when the hairs are dry, they're kind of bushy. Okay. So can you see the difference there? Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. So that makes a difference. Um, when you wet these, they, bec they come right back together. So if I wet that, you can see that everything comes back together. Um, I am doing some little videos. Uh, I'll probably do one a week or 
every week and a half or so on brushes and different uh, techniques and stuff that I will post also. But I wanted to come on and show you that application. Um, I still think it's possibly that it was just too thin and how much the glass rounded. Okay, does anybody have a question? If you type in the question, I'll try to answer. These are the G series that I'm using. If you're using, um, we do have a question. Question? Your best tip on how to determine if you've applied a thin or thick coat to fire? It's revealing post firing, but the challenge is how to tell before you put it in the kiln, trying to determine number of firings in advance. Okay, so I like and prefer to work on a light board. I did not up here. Um, you lift it up okay and you can look underneath it okay you can lift it up and look underneath and if it looks opaque then it should be opaque now I can tell you my little thing about anything that's white so 302 even 344 anything white in it if I feel like I'm light color a light application what I will do is lift it up and look at it look at it on the light board and paint literally paint and I'll show you that I will come in and we're going to pretend that this is on the back side and I will just paint in a thin coat of my base color, the white, the ivory, the uh, powder. I will paint that on the back side and that generally will help with your coverage. You can set that, um, some of uh, the teachers have set as low as 12, I want to say 1260. We recommend 1380 because that does mature the color. If it is uh, powdery looking, then it's not hot enough. If it's shiny, you reach that sweet spot and you can probably get away with that, okay? Um, I hope that answers your question. So um, I'm a one and done. I like to just get it done and get it over with, okay? Um, and thank you, Christine, for answering. I was just looking. Christine said check it on the light box, and that is uh, true. Um, so thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, any other questions? I just, like I said, I for just some basic application. Now, can, let me zoom in. Whoops, wrong way. Uh, on this one, as it starts to dry, I don't, there you go, I think you can see it. It gets a little edge, and then you can go ahead and apply the next petal. But I try to work back earth or maybe three flowers on a um, surface and I will do a flower over here and one over here and one over here you know a petal and work back and forth as I'm doing it so that's a good way to do things so just flood it on do not the brush tip is not even touching the surface all I'm doing is pulling and pushing that color I wipe off the excess you can blot on a paper towel if you feel like you need to grab that second color, apply it, and shimmy back and forth. And you have to kind of work just on that top surface. It's like you're um, skimming the top. Sometimes I'll even come back. Let's say I want more red and less white showing here. So I can come back and pull that red down into the white. So there's different ways of doing it, okay? Is there any other questions? Hi, John. What's your best tip on how to determine if you've applied too thin or thick? Okay, so the one that asked that question, okay, sorry, John, I forgot. So if you can see through it, it's too thin, okay? Um, if you can't see through it up to a light, um, don't turn it upside down because your color is going to fall off, okay? Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Just um, talking about basic application. Um, I know that uh, Mary or Claire said that um, they could get a fine line with the outline. I'm going to do uh, the outline of white, and you know what? I'm going to dark underneath it, which I don't have. So let me see if that is good. I just grabbed a note the bottles to see. So with the bottles you can apply our and tips. We have four different tips. 
and they come in the piping kit. So if you buy a piping kit, you get an empty bottle, you get um, the red caps, and then you get four different tips. Some kits only have uh, tips in them, just have the pink and the yellow in there. So look and see on the description exactly. Um, always add tips also. So that cap comes off. All you're going to do is put on the red lure lock and then with the outlines because they're so thin I like to use the um, Kyle um, the black bent tip I need can you come around and place my back here okay so let me grab a piece of clear I don't know the I like to hold the tip bent on the side and I did not check to see if this was okay and hopefully I have a tip that's not clogged because I did not check it and I don't. So let me grab another one. I need a dark color. Any color, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's try this one. So it's liquid enough. Uh, the other thing is uh, your tips, that they are stainless steel. You can drop them in water and leave them. You don't have to worry about cleaning them right away. And uh, so let me see if I can show you this real quick on a dark color. Okay, I think you can see that. All right, so side. Okay, so if you're straight above it, what you're going to do is scrape off what you're putting on. Okay, so you lay it to the side and you can make your outline. So if this was my flower. And this is on 90, so it's rough, and I'm used to doing it on 90. I apologize. I'm going one direction and then connecting it in another. If I go all the way up and try to come down, what am I doing? Okay. So you can let this white outline dry, come back and flood your color inside of it. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do. And I believe uh, Claire said she could get fine lines when she used the white. Take it off, put it in the water. So solid and I lose my tip. Same thing with the cap. Okay, looks like we have another question. And Christine wants to know, is there any way to tip after it dries? What color of tip? Uh, well, it doesn't matter what color it is. Um, you can try like taking, um, take like a glass measuring cover and then heat up some water in the microwave and then drop it in that hot water. There are some different quilting type pins. The bent one, no, because can't bend it, but the other tips you could use one of those pens and try to get in there. We don't sell anything like that. Um, I have soaked mine for a long period of time, but the warm water sometimes will. Just make sure that you pull the plunger up. And I did not get one of those either. Hold on. So we have the plungers that come in the kits. This is a really old one. Okay. And so if you're having trouble. I find that sometimes it's easier if you pull the water up into the syringe first. So I've got water in there, and then touch it with a half a turn. Okay. If you screw that on any tighter, what's going to happen is it's it's going to be harder to get off of there. And just you can hear that noise. Start squeezing it in and out. Okay. But warm water, Christine, would probably be the best that you could do. Let it soak in that and try it again. Um, you can try using maybe even um, and have it in a little cup, like a, a disposable cup, and pull up some of that in there uh, or let it soak in it. Um, but the hot water is the only thing. That I found. The black one is the one that you're going to have the issue with and you may lose that one if you don't clean it right away. Okay, That one is a pain. Uh, just clean it. Um, I would not recommend using the black with the paste. I would definitely use uh, the pink or the white with the paste. Uh, the white does have a bent side. I use that one with the paste for like my seniors that have trouble with arthritis or anybody that can squeeze. Um, that usually makes it. But mainly just the hot water. Okay. All right. Um, 
So you can see that it starts to dry and it gets chalky around the edges. Okay. So I hope this helped. Any other questions before I go? Oh yes, we do have another question. No? Uh, Terry just wanted to know if this will be available to watch later because she can't watch right now. It will be. Yes, it'll be saved on this page. And then also the program that I am using, um, I, it downloads to my computer and I will even put it up as a YouTube. So you can it there, so it'll be available here, the website and on my YouTube channel. Be sure and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you get um, notifications when I put something new out there. Um, like I said, one, I just did one uh, on top of a pour and I used a stencil and uh, I'll show you that one later today. I just got it out of the kiln and it's not where I can reach it. Well, thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions, put them here on the thread. I'll go back and check them and answer those for you. Okay? Thank you. Have a great day and stay safe and stay healthy with everything going on these days. Bye bye.